soldiers all over the world have traditionally been deployed to a variety of locations, ranging from deepest, darkest forests and scorching barren deserts to blazing war zones and trenches. With such exposure to some of the world's most volatile and secret places, strange things are bound to occur every now and again. But what if one of those missions suddenly took a truly weird turn? The military may be there to protect us, but they themselves have had a few otherworldly encounters over the years. Encounters with a potential enemy, the likes of which have never been fought against before. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three UFO reports involving the military. A US Soldier's Eyewitness Account our next story is a true eyewitness account from a soldier in the US military. Names and other sensitive information have not been disclosed in the following account. I served in Iraq and I'd like to get my story out there. I don't want to say where I was deployed as I don't want to give too much information away. But one strange thing that did happen while I was there was the multiple UFOs that were witnessed by myself and others who were there. At the time, I never opened up and told people about this. It wasn't something I wanted people knowing. And after all, people who talk about these topics tend to get a label put on them. Regardless, these crafts would appear in the sky at around dusk. Sometimes they would be disc-shaped, while other times they would be in the shape of an orb. The size of them varied, but I'd say that on average, they were around 25 to 40 feet in length. When these objects first started to appear in the sky, me and others thought it may have been linked to the enemy. After all, it wasn't uncommon to see projectiles in the sky, but these things were different. They seemed to be under intelligent control, being able to go from one place to another in a matter of seconds. On one particular night, one of these UFOs came into view around 1,000 meters from where we were. You could see it because it was pulsating, not in the way that an aeroplane or helicopter gives off light but rather it looked like the whole object was actually the light. It's tough to explain, but these things seem to have been made of light. On another night, one of these UFOs flew close to the ground, almost as if inspecting the area. After this, it shot up to the sky, leaving a hole in the nearby cloud. To this day, me and my friends who witnessed these crafts have no idea what they were. The Edwards Air Force Base Encounter Edwards Air Force Base sits amidst the dusty plains of the Mojave Desert, home to the Earth's hottest place, Death Valley, where temperatures fluctuate from scorching hot in the summer to freezing cold in the winter. The desert is a hostile and dangerous place, but it's also one of America's most fascinating places for a number of reasons. Geographically, the area is unique, and as we've mentioned, the climate is too. Furthermore, the first space shuttle mission, Columbia, landed at Edwards on its return to Earth in April 1981. However, there's a reason much more relevant to this video as to why we're taking a look at the base. Edwards Air Force Base, by location and the majority of its purpose, is just a regular military installation. But it also serves a joint purpose. The base essentially controls activities at the nearby Homey Airport, also known as Groom Lake, also known as Area 51. One would imagine that some strange things must be seen late at night that far out in the desert, surrounded by nothing but open air and dusty expanses. And indeed, one night in 1965, an air traffic controller at the base had a strange encounter with what he believed was a flying saucer. In 1965, Edwards, like US Air Force bases all over the country, were on high alert for suspicious activity in the skies. Tension with the Soviet Union was mounting, and the most shocking thing that radar controllers in the Nevada desert could have seen back then would have been a Russian aircraft. However, the objects that appeared above the base, apparently flying very high and very fast, appeared in sets of 7 to 12 and looked like pulsating lights against the night sky. However, the controllers couldn't be sure of what they'd seen, and as a precaution, an F-106A fighter jet was scrambled from the nearby George Air Force Base at Victorville. 
Yet, the strange lights continued to climb into the night sky, far outpacing the fighter jet. Controllers noted that the craft seemed to simply fade away into space, becoming one of the stars. The thing about the Edwards incident is that the eyewitness reports were credible, so the crew at the base most definitely did see something that night. It's just not clear what it was that they saw. We don't know what sort of threat or how bad a threat these supposed UFOs posed, but when the evidence was released only about 15 years ago, people realized that the government had gone to great lengths at the time to cover up these sorts of incidents. The Dobbins Air Force Base Encounter We're throwing back the years again to the 1950s, an era of economic boom, consumerism and prosperity in the United States. Whilst the 50s in the States was undoubtedly an era of optimism for many, the country was also paranoid, sleeping with one eye open due to the threat of communism and Cold War posed by the Soviets. This paranoia also opened up avenues for conspiracy theories, and UFOs were high up on that list. Bruce Bleach was a tower operator at Dobbins Air Force Base near Atlanta, Georgia in the 50s. The base was one of a few that were designated as stopping points for top-secret aircraft such as the Blackbird, and therefore staff required security clearance. The base was also a UFO sighting hotspot, so much so they installed a special 3D camera to photograph the craft when they appeared. Special forms also had to be signed when said sightings occurred. As we previously mentioned, the UFO craze was taking hold of America in the 50s, and Beach's first experience with extraterrestrials came when he was only 15. After attending a lecture on the matter, Beach was hooked, and it was around this time where his native Kansas began to play host to a number of not just UFO, but actual alien sightings. When he applied to become a controller at Dobbins and underwent his basic training, Beach's instructors explained that sometimes what they thought were UFOs would appear on radar screens and in the skies around the base, and that they'd called in several experts from across the US to try and explain the phenomena. One day, one of Beach's colleagues offered him the chance to see a UFO, claiming that he was a Rosicrucian, somebody who claimed to possess mystical wisdom. Yet, as the colleague had predicted, the night Beach and 20 other employees went to experience the UFOs for themselves, they did so. Beach described them as bright orange lights and noted that two fighter jets had been scrambled to pursue the suspected UFOs. Another incident occurred some months later, but this time during the day. A small aircraft that was scheduled to make a routine inspection flight around the base appeared strange to Beach and his colleagues, and upon closer inspection, they saw what they believed was another UFO. Beach recalled, in varying light and varying angles, one has to sometimes tilt their head to identify the aircraft silhouette and the type of aircraft they are observing. I couldn't see any wings. The UFO sightings didn't end there for Beach and the crew at Dobbins. They occurred again at Dobbins and even in the Arctic when Beach was stationed there for a period of time. These strange, luminous auras in the sky convinced Beach and many others of the existence of UFOs, and he's adamant that they aren't merely just theories. UFOs have been a thing of immense fascination across the world for thousands of years, but Americans were amongst the first to take continued interest in the phenomena. And when multiple soldiers, those who we trust with keeping us safe, are mind-boggled and ultimately convinced by their own sightings, you can't help but think that there might be something else out there. No matter what your thoughts surrounding these incidents, one thing that can't be ignored is that there are only two possible conclusions to make when it comes to repeated UFO sightings, either a truth within the story or false. But what do you make of these UFO reports? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.